What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny's Indiana Jones in Review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every movie in the Indiana Jones cinematic universe. As always, I'm Tim Gettys, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Anything goes. It's a perfect way to, to open both a movie and a podcast, Greg. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. We also have the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Hello, Tim. I'm loving the beanie. I'm loving a little bit of the boy band hair coming out the, the bottom little. of it. I did Just that for you. Of it. I, I want you to know, Nick. I, oh, I, I messed it up. I have it going. A little Pete way. Wentz action right there. Yeah, I, I actually did that. I was like, I, if I leave the hair out. Nick Nick's will comment. If I'm I just leave it, it Nick's not no. going to say shit. No, so no, no, I need the hair out. I need the hair so out. Yeah. There's it makes you look just... instantly 10 years younger. Mm -hmm. And like way more mm -hmm. idealistic. <laughs> like, like you're not, you're not beat down by all the sales deals yet. Right. You're still not bright, yet. bright eyed, bushy tailed boy. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of bright and bushy, we got Plessy. <laughs> That's what, they call me. That's what they call me back in school. They're like, oh, yeah, you're bright and bushy. What's up? And <laughs> before we went live with this, before we went live, Nick was talking about how he had a bushy beard, but I just pulled a Nick and accidentally attributed that to the wrong person. So, bless, unfortunately, you are now. I'll take it. Honestly, I take blessings beards getting there. Yeah, yeah, no, I take that as a compliment because, again, like this is my first time growing a beard and I'm four months in. And so, for you to describe me as bushy is the nicest thing you can say to me right now. <laughs> and of course, you know, it, we it, have... there's, a, there's a, steep, uh, a steep cliff on that one, bless. Just be careful. Because <laughs> 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 eventually, Tim will say bushy, but he'll say it the wrong way. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, anyway, the comments will be like, what? Then yeah, Tim's well, coming on a blessing a little bit hard there. Like, yeah, yes. <laughs> we have the nitro rifle, Andy Cortez. Anything goes, including Greg. Um, you know, just seeing a Grover appear on his lap mm -hmm. and having the Grover jump on his lap. Some call hey. it the best episode of In Review of all time, so yeah. don't worry about it, Andy. What what shenanigans will happen here? We'll have to find out because this is kind of funny's in review where every week we rank and review two different movie franchises. Right now, we are in the middle of Indiana Jones in review, and we are also about to start Magic Mike in review. I've never seen it. I'm very excited. Uh, but you can watch this show on youtube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com. If you want to listen to it, search your favorite podcast service for kind of funny reviews. And if you want to get the show ad free, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny just like our patreon producers did graham of legend david mintel al tribesman cassandra ramirez sven mikhail james davis and the nanobiologist thank all of you uh if you want to be patreon producers you can go do that but there's so many other things you can do on patreon including being a patreon platinum member which this month gets you the kind of funny pups valentine's day poster it's awesome you should go check it out it's not a poster it's a print I don't, know the difference. I don't know at print. what point a print becomes a poster, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, this is a print is something you frame, a poster is something you tape to the wall. Okay, okay. So I guess yeah, for sure. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Me Undies and Keeps, but we will get to that later because today we're talking about Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I got a lot of fun facts on this one because there was a lot, a lot of a lot of interviews that even just looking at the Wikipedia, I was like, damn, this is a lot more in, in depth than than this typically is. Uh, so Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom runtime of one hour and 58 minutes. Uh, there was a quote from Spielberg saying, after I showed the film to George Lucas at an hour and 55 minutes, we looked at each other. The first thing we said was, this is too fast. We needed to decelerate the action, so we did a few more matte shots to slow it down. We made it a little slower by putting some breathing room in the back so there'd be a, it, so there'd be a two hour oxygen supply for the audience. And this is interesting. And I just love that, of course, Spielberg and Lucas are like, especially back then, caring and thinking about that stuff and being enough to be like, hey, guys, there's just way too much action in this. We need to like... Have some moments, some moments to breathe. Um, it was released on May 23rd, 1984. In response to some of the more violent sequences in the film, uh, with similar complaints about Gremlins as well, Spielberg suggested that the MPAA alter its rating system, which it did. And two months after the release of this movie, they created PG-13. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Right? That's, yeah, that's right pretty cool. there, right? Where you're like, come yeah, on, totally. let's change it. That's but it's that's some Hard. LeBron James type shit, like yeah. going to Adam Silver in the NBA being like, you know, maybe we get an extra day off here. And they're like, yeah, maybe you should. That's a good idea. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's also, it also just speaks volumes to standards in the 80s that a movie that includes someone getting their still beating heart ripped out of their chest – only PG thirteen, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, no, there was no nipples. Out, but then there was no nipples. Didn't kill him. 
No, he did, did not no, kill him. No, they just burned him alive. It's a theoretical well, then heart. killed him, then killed him. But the hard part didn't kill him, which I was like, this is this is kind of weird. Did I miss something there? No. No, I mean, no, the heart magic? was still... No, it's, it's, it's magic. magic. So That's the heart was still, zombies. still yeah. beating in his hand, which is crazy. So if you look and, at and it closely, it's still beating. And then when he gets up. lit on fire, the heart gets lit on fire. So it's like still part of him. It's, it's a cool effect. I was, yeah. I was like, I was terrified mm-hmm. when I was a kid. That whole sequence of like... Was like Kalima, Kalima. I was like, I don't want any part of this at all, and I haven't ever traveled since. One thing though, that whole sequence was fiction, work of fiction. Oh, oh, wow. I didn't, none of that's that. Not wow. possible. That's a fun fact. Good job. Andy. Good job. Yeah. Steven Check Spielberg team. wanted to kill a man on set. Like, <laughs> <laughs> MPA was fiction. like, can't do that. George and Lucas is like, we can't do it again. Yeah, the right? U.S. government was like, that. you know, we can't. You can't do that either. Like, we're we're just gonna step in here, also, not just the MPAA. Directed by Steven Spielberg, music once again by John Williams. And guys, who besides me noticed how much Star Wars music motifs were in this? So many flourishes. Oh, uh, last week we talked about the the Leia theme, like kind of being there for the love theme for Indiana Jones. This, I swear to God, it was like every single song they used. I was like, okay, short rounds theme is straight up Anakin's theme from Episode One. There's like during the chanting of the the sacrifice, it's Duel of the Fates for like a good two seconds interesting like there's like the so many moments where i was like wow they that it's so cool that john williams has just done this so much that like he just kind of has got it down to a size where he's like cute adorable kid it's gonna sound plucky just like this deal with it uh a budget of that is not right oh yeah it is (laughs) 28.17 million dollars i just saw 28.17 i'm like that that looks like a time code but that's whatever 28.17 28.17 million uh, during production. The movie was starting to go over budget and Spielberg went to the writers and asked them to make changes to the script in order to save money. So they removed one page from the script, which saved them a million dollars, <laughs> which is insane when the budget was 28, which is pretty modest uh, relatively for mm-hmm. everything. So uh, it was a planned air chase scene using vintage biplanes. The scene was removed from the movies, but maybe we'll see it later in an up- upcoming Indiana Jones film. Interesting. That's Will cool. we? I don't know. That's really cool. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, box office of three hundred and thirty. Sounds like that's a future spoiler. Yeah. No future yeah. spoiler. I can't tell you, even if I know. Uh, but a box office of three hundred and thirty-three point one million. The film had the highest opening weekend of nineteen eighty-four and was that year's highest-grossing film worldwide. But it was third in North America. Nick and Greg, do you have any guesses on what beat it in North in 19- America in nineteen eighty-four? Ghostbusters. And. Ooh, Beverly Hills Cop, maybe? Nailed it, Nick. Oh, look at you. Proud of you. Bam, bam, bam. Really? I only Bring remember that. Andy, hit the, I only hit the keyboard. Hit the keyboard. Remember. Hold on. He's going to do hold it for on. you. Hold on. Hold it's on. coming, everybody. Andy has a keyboard. If you know he plugs it in, it's always Here at the ready. He's always ready to make music. There it is. Nailed it. More Blade Runner now we're doing? It. There we go. There we go. Cool. <laughs> that was really good. I, you know, it's funny. I only remember that because I read that book that Elise <laughs> recommended for me. And it said it during the, the moment of like where they were talking about Ghostbusters being a huge thing. They were like, but it wasn't the biggest comedy of that year. And then you turn the page and the next chapter just says Eddie Murphy. And you're like, fuck. Damn. That was we like, got him in the end though, guys. Don't worry. Ghostbusters won in the end, everybody. Oh, ready, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it did, man. Um, I think, hold on. I think Red Red the Cop 2 did better than Ghostbusters. Now. Um, for uh, audio uh, listeners, Greg is holding up a Ghostbusters really, really close up to the camera. It was very blurry the whole time. It's the Ecto-1, and he was singing the song. That's for audio oh, listeners. Morning, focus. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Oh, there it is. Man. Oh this, God! I did back. like your rendition a lot. <laughs> 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 I well, Andy, I enjoyed your indi- rendition of the Beverly Hills Cop theme, which, like, I thought you were about to nail, and then I don't know what the fuck yeah, you, that, did you, on did, that you didn't get all that. You I wasn't all trying that. to even play a theme. I didn't even know Beverly Hills Cop had a theme. I was just playing notes. The one Nick walked around the office forever with that little Casio keyboard doing. Oh yeah, yeah. Probably blessing you remember all your days in the office. Yeah, exactly. No, I remember. Uh, wait, didn't didn't Nick always come to the, like the main room with some kind of song plan? It's... Is that the one we're talking about right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, no, no. Nick, okay. pro- Nick probably got rid of that one. by now. He probably doesn't have it anymore. Because oh, there was a KFAF bit. I'm not making this up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was right. a different right. song, though. That yeah, was Ode to Joy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, this movie was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Original Score, and it won the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. Um, that's all I got for you there. 
let's talk about what we thought about this movie. Andy, I want to start with you. It was okay. Get Just... the fuck out of here. <laughs> it, it was okay. It was all right. It felt like a sequel. I liked it. I didn't think it was anything special. I think that the sequences towards the end were fun and entertaining, and they were. it, it was a blast to finally feel like something was going, but I didn't really care for What's Her Face. I like Short really? Round, though. I like Short Round a lot. Didn't really care for Willie. And um, I don't know. It felt like a sequel. It felt like a lot of the sequences. Again, I've never been on the Indiana Jones ride, but it felt like all of the minecart sequences and the the crazy river water raft uh, sequences are were filmed for the ride. Like it, it felt like those sequences were filmed for the ride, and you would see it pop up on the screen as you're walking in. It just, I didn't love those moments. Um, but the whole, I guess the whole third act was really fun and uh, kind of was entertaining. But I thought it was a, I thought it was a decent movie. Nothing, nothing too great. I enjoy the first one a lot more. Bless. What about you? I'm a little bit conflicted on it because I think this watch was a more fun watch than uh, the previous one, Raiders of the Lost Ark. But I think the whole package was a bit of a letdown overall. Like, I had a good time. I really enjoyed a lot of the action. I enjoyed a lot of the back and forths between uh, Indiana and a lot of the other characters. But it feels like in a lot of ways they learned some of the wrong lessons from Raiders of the Lost Ark where... Uh, I think I mentioned on the last episode when we talked about Raiders was how well they structured and choreographed the action so that it felt like the action itself told a story. Whereas here, it feels like there's a lot more action and it is a lot more violent and it's in in a lot of ways a lot more messy in ways that don't tell as much of a clean linear story. Like it's it, it, it's stuff that you follow you follow along with it, but it's like. Yeah, right. While Indiana's over here, also Short Round is over here doing this thing, and also there's like a big wave of water that's on its way and like there's so much going on in temple of in temple of doom action wise that uh that stuff kind of lost me a bit even though i think there are some really good moments in the action uh that said i think when it comes to story and characters and stuff like that also kind of felt like a step down you know especially when you compare people like willie uh to marion in the first film i don't know i don't know who 100%. thought it was okay to to go this direction with hit this it character. hit it tim hit it with your fact uh, guess guess who she ended up marrying? Steven Spielberg. Willie. Steven Spiel- Spielberg. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Now, yeah. I mean, again, this is I, no disrespect to Kate Capshaw. I love Kate Capshaw, and she's in one of my all-time favorite movies, Black Rain, starring uh, Michael Douglas. It's a really Scott film. It's awesome. What's um, it about? Uh, it is about a two to two American detectives, Michael Douglas and Andy Garcia, who have to mm-hmm. escort a yakuza member back to sure. Japan, and when they get there, uh, they get attacked by a gang and lose him and then michael douglas takes it upon himself to basically go through japan find his ass and like bring him to justice along with the help of a japanese detective it's fucking awesome it's like noir ridley scott 80s so rad we should watch it one day bless um but i'm with you guys on this too (laughs) not you greg (laughs) (laughs) sounds great (laughs) blessing and i are doing the uh we're doing the uh, demolition the demolition man it's gonna be fun very excited about that but greg maybe you and i you guys are doing demolition man you and me could do this nick that's how it works we'll do we'll do black rain together it'll be cool uh, also, the the connotation of Black Rain is awesome because it's not not to go off on a tangent, but I just learned the other day looking at facts that it that Black Rain uh, signifies the rain that came down at, after the nuclear fallout from um, the two bombs dropped in Japan mm. was uh, deadly. It would come out like soot, soot oh, black, sure, and yeah. all the all the toxins would come out. Anyway, anyway, uh, Kate Capshaw, no disrespect to her, but this character is just not likable, and That's actually, so Indy is not likable either really in this the only character that i always find myself really i like loving is short round and oh, yeah. i think they give him a lot of fun stuff to do and that actor i love him in that i love him in goonies i i mean i just it's he has such a good dynamic with indy that you almost want to go back in time and go why do you even need why why is there a need for a, a sort of damsel in distress in this when you've got this awesome relationship between you and like this sort of like um, you know he's like a father figure uh, Indy's a father figure to him. I love right? like you, you Indy. Sort of, when he yeah, says, I like, love, I love you, dude, my friend. Oh, that so scene, cute. the scene, the only emotional scene in this whole movie is after Indy comes out of the trance. Yeah. Right? Um, and he hands Short Round his his Yankees hat, and Short Round hands him back the fedora. And I'm just and, like, and it's I've, the shot, it's the framing of it's, it. It's and it's like because it's all Indy's from ra- Short shot. Round's perspective, yeah. it's all from his perspective. Really, really. And good. he goes, "I'm sorry." He goes, like, "He's like, you're my best friend." It's so oh. fucking good. It's so difficult yeah. to do too, Nick, because we're talking about like every you know Harrison Ford, Han Solo, 
He's he's Indiana Jones, and then you're gonna add a, a little kid to the to the equation. This could really screw up and make people hate it. And yeah. I thought it was awesome. I liked it it's, a lot. It's so weird because I can't as as I before I started watching this movie. D just had the TV on outside, and she was watching. I think it's either the second or the third Mummy film where they have a kid. Do you guys remember that? Where it's like it's Rachel Wise and Brandon Fraser, and they're yeah. and their kid, and it's super not fun because there's nothing fun about watching a little British kid like be snarky the entire time. Sure, this is the opposite of that. Where I'm like, I think the best part of the movie is short round. I think because he always constantly saves Indy's ass, and then he also has those moments of vulnerability like he would have if he were a kid in in this kind of a crazy setting. Greg, yeah, I didn't. Think? I did not. I did not like Marion uh, at all. And all it it, it feels or like, or uh, sorry, not Marion. Um, Willie. Willie. Yeah, I did yeah. not like Willie at all. And it feels like almost the the realization of a bit of what I kind of felt in the last film, where Marion ultimately I loved as a character because she had attitude. She was able to hold her own whenever when uh, whenever it came down to it. And there are things here and there where I was like, okay, it feels like she is kind of. Uh, damsel in distress see every now and then in this film and it is she she she, they do put her in like a dress for one of the villains and all this stuff that i I wasn't really feeling but ultimately i like that character whereas in this movie there there feels like there's not much at all redeemable redeemable about willie and when you get those scenes of indiana and willie having that back and forth of okay are we gonna have sex are we not gonna have sex the whole time i was just like do you want to have sex with her because she's kind of lame like i don't like her at all Vice versa, yeah, no, right? they, like they, she does that thing i think the character of willie that is the problem with anything like this where it, <clears throat> oh but she's supposed to be annoying yeah but it's not an endearing annoying it's and there's no real come around for her right it is just she's indie the entire time and then flipping sides and doing it's just like well i don't that's yeah, what i'm not having fun whenever you're on screen really that's what i was gonna say right like so the big cardinal sin to me is by the end of it I guess there is a little character growth where they 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 kind of shoehorn in that scene for both Indy and this is both Indy and Willie where they go, hey, too bad you didn't find your fortune and glory, and and he's like, ah, the stone would have just wound up in a museum anyway, and then they're like make out, and I'm like, I don't have a feeling like these characters are gonna go past the first date on this mm-hmm. one. I, I feel like they both now. are kind of very superficial in this, and it sucks because I think a lot of the um the cocky charm that Indy had in the first one doesn't necessarily translate to this. Hmm. And again, probably going back to what Tim's saying is because there's so much action in this that when we get to those scenes that are the breather scenes, you have to really like these two characters and really be rooting yep. for them to figure their shit out so that they can grow and then you know go on to be better people. And in this. You get that a little bit with with the indie short round relationship, but with Willie, you're just like they they made her so unlikable at the beginning that like they just they just there's no way for her to come around at the end and be a redeemable character. Greg, what do you think about this one? It's a it's a <clears throat> weird one, right? I don't have an attachment to Indiana Jones, like it's not one of my franchises or anything like that, and I didn't gr- grow up idolizing it. But Raiders, I'm sorry, no, no. Uh, Temple of Doom is Indiana Jones to me. Like, I think for the longest time, it's the only Indiana Jones I had seen. I remember my neighbors liked it a lot, so they, they it would play a lot. They probably put it on, you know, while my parents and them hung out or whatever. And so, like, it's the one I saw over and over again, and it's the one I have, I guess, I, I, it's the only one I have an attachment to in some way. So, for me, it still is indie, and it's that thing of comparing it, to, you know, in review here to what we di- did with Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like, I like this movie more. Everything we've just said is true. Like, I I don't like Willie. Like, I you know, and I and I think again, there's a part of the character that's designed to not be likable. She's supposed to be this diva, but it's also like we're all saying a million times over, like. There's no redeeming thing that brings her back to it, right? It's the same reason I don't like Miss Piggy, but that's a conversation for a different time. <laughs> like, wow. you know what I mean? I think, like, we, I think we found the root of your muffin. Up, Miss Piggy is a bitch, all right? Kermit could do better, and we all know it. I'm just putting it out there, right? She she's put, just getting she Kermit into trouble. She to do better, though. She's the yin to his, his green Yeah, yang. she's something, all right? You know what I mean? Sausage roll ready to happen. That's <laughs> what she is. Am I right, everybody? I am texting Get out of here. Right right Nobody wants you. I am Nobody wants you. right now. Uh, but it is that thing of, like, I... For if you would have asked me growing up what Indiana Jones is, I would have pointed at this. These big uh, set pieces, these flourishes, this action, this, again, like you're talking about, nonstop action for the most part, with the exception as a kid that I wouldn't have even picked up on them trying to sleep, you know, nocturnal uh, mating rituals or whatever. I wouldn't have picked up on any of that, right? So, like, I enjoy this more than I enjoy Raiders, but I do agree with everything we're saying right here. But it is also that thing of... Indie still being indie, right? Of like, yeah, you're talking about, you know, growth or whatever, changing it around. Like, there's this whole argument to it of what he's doing, the pulp event, adventure they're copying, yada, yada. But like, the set pieces, the action, I, I, the, how scary it is, how 
as a kid, it's comedic when they bring out all the crazy foods. Now it's just fucking racist. <laughs> you're like, all right, yeah. cool. Even short round, you're like, oh, God. Yeah, like, no, yeah. this, this is a movie, movie that doesn't age. This movie entirely, the, it, the whole time, feels racist. And then every once in a while, it's like, oh, no, it is. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, damn, yeah. like constantly it just keeps going back and forth. And there, there's a lot of obvious controversy about that. Even back when it first came out, I was like reading a whole bunch of things. I'll, I'll read some here. Uh, the depiction of Indian culture caused controversy and brought it to the attention of India censors who placed a temporary ban on it, uh, when it and it didn't open in theaters. The film was later released when it came out on home video. The depiction of Indian cuisine was heavily criticized as dish, dishes such as baby snakes, eyeballs, Beatles and chilled monkey brains are not Indian foods. Yeah. Uh, Roshan Seth, who played Chatter Lal, mentioned that the banquet scene was a joke that went wrong, saying Stephen intended it as a joke. The joke being that Indians were so smart that they knew all Westerners think that Indians eat these foods, but they don't. So they served them what they expected. The joke was too subtle for the film. Uh, in the script, a brief scene which did not make it into the film had Indiana Jones remarking, quote, even if they were trying to scare us away, a devout Hindu would never touch meat. It makes you wonder what these people are. A hint that something was amiss in the palace. Mm -hmm. That would have went a long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's the yeah. problem because unfortunately, what they did instead was they had a, a character who was Indian, basically validated all of it. Who was like, Snake "Oh, chilled surprise. monkey brains," <laughs> and that basically tells Two at them, once. yeah, it's and it's unfortunate. And that was it. it just really sucks. Like they didn't need that scene. I, I thought the more look how fucking um, weird our culture is. Like that's all that whole sort of sequence I, was. I, was, I, was I thought the more it, it, like pertinent scene was when Willie when they give her food in the village and she goes, "Yeah, I don't she won't take this. it." And Indy's like, take the fucking food. Like, this is more food than these people have seen yeah. in two weeks. Like, like they're starving. That, and I think that, that, that line always, uh, like, kind of, you know, resonates with me. That was the thing that fed me hope when it when uh, it came to Indy and, and all of them falling to the village, right? Where, where, where Indy was like, hey, this is more food than they eat in a week. That's when I started to be like, okay, no, I think I'm starting to feel where this is going in this character and all that stuff. And then immediately when you get into the, the palace and they're, they're doing that dinner scene, it feels like they threw all of that out in a way where I was like, damn, well, we're almost there. But now we're nose diving into weird, like racist depictions of Indian food. Yeah. Uh, I read I read a piece of trivia and I don't know if this makes the 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 name short round better or worse, but apparently all the characters name were named after do like producers or writers dogs. So like Indiana, Willie, and Short Round were all names for like some of the people's like dogs, and they were like, oh, that'll be a fun little meta thing. I don't know if it makes it better or worse, honestly. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's it that is I read. what it is. <laughs> Yeah, this one was uh, very surprising to me because last week I was kind of like, oh, man, I was really wrong about what I thought Indiana Jones was and or who he is. And this movie, I'm like, oh, no, this is Indiana Jones. This is who I thought he was going to be. He is way more Han Solo. He's way more quippy and fun. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he has sh short round to work off of, like him being able to quip with somebody that kind of feels like they're equals on that that kind of quippy vibe of like, what we're we going to do. We have two adventurers that are out there adventuring. I really, really, really liked their dynamic. And I think that it brought out so much more in Harrison Ford, even the beginning scene of him when he's in the, the suit and stuff. I was like, I mean, obviously uncharted. It's like, Oh my God, did uncharted have anything original at all? <laughs> uh, but um, it's interesting where I was like, Oh my God, I loved the character of Indiana Jones in this one compared to, to last week's. And I think the action in this was at the very least equal to, if not better. And I think it was definitely better paced. Uh, mm -hmm. The only kind of thing that I might cut is I feel like there was a couple of similar chase scenes uh, in the middle and the end. But oh. besides that, I was just like, I the, my biggest fault with this movie, besides the racism that is obviously an issue is uh, that uh, what's your name? Willa Will what? Willie. 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 Yeah, Willie. everything we've said. I, don't, I really don't have too much more to add, but like, it, it's not just that she doesn't have character growth or that she's annoying. Every single thing she does feels like it, it makes the movie worse. Like, every line of dialogue she has of like, oh, he's a really small guy in there. It's like, what the fuck? We're going to start this movie off with like yeah. such... And it's, it's it sucks dialogue. because she was more so cartoony weird. than anything else in the movie. Yeah, yeah. she's very the character itself. And again, we're not yeah. we're not we're not criticizing Kate Capshaw, but the character itself is no, that's I am totally down on, on <laughs> uh, yeah. that's that's up to the writers, right? They really they chose to have Marion, who I who I think is a three dimensional character in the first one, and then they said, why don't we just put? I mean, Willie's just so one dimensional, and it's it's unfortunate they did that character and uh, Kate Capshaw a huge disservice by doing that, and the movie in general too, especially when we have a different dynamic that's being painted with with short round and indie. The the thing that always strikes me about this movie though, and I think I, I don't think I could ever put 
words to it until this last time I watched it was that this does the reason I dislike this is because it doesn't have the grand spirit of adventure that I've come to think is synonymous with Indiana Jones. We only see, for instance, the plane and the map thing. We see that once, one time. Yeah. And so I, I was it, surprised when we got uh, to India. Like I, I haven't watched this stem to stern in so long. Right. And so to get there, I was like, "Oh man, we're already here, and we're already introduced to the village and the people there." And it's like, "Oh, mm-hmm. okay, we're this is moving at a clip. We're going." Yeah. I, I thought the movie, movie though, I thought the movie was going to end when they fell off the raft. I thought they were, they were all going to die in the river. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, we should not have survived that. <laughs> so a fact, a fact I have for you there is during season three of Mythbusters in 2005, the team tested the plausibility of surviving a fall from an airplane in a How life raft, that? <laughs> as depicted in this movie. After three drops with their test dummy in a raft, they determined that it is no way possible to survive that yeah, that's anything that's wow. yes, yes, so there you go. Now, Nick, did they I, do the- I actually think that like, that really worked in – what's up? Did they do the test where the raft goes off a five billion mile high cliff? Because that's the next shot, right? Or is yeah. that the one you're talking about? No, I'm talking about the out of the plane. But I mean, out of yeah, the plane, yeah. Let me. But hey, even just we're talking about that. We're not sinking. We're crazy. Oh, it's, it's, so, it's so funny, Greg, because I had never heard that line. I only ever heard Stewie say that line. I didn't know where it was from. Didn't know. <laughs> but we're not sinking. We're crazy. And that's why he says it. I was so like, bad. oh, that's shit. That's Family Guy interview, Andy. Let's do Family Guy interview. I'm down. I'm down, Greg. But I tell you, the, the new voice of Cleveland's coming on the kind of funny podcast soon. Did I tell you that? Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. No My way. My sister's gonna love that episode. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Who's yeah. the new voice? <laughs> I forget his name. He we booked him a couple last week. Is I it booked Eric Griffin. Fuck. No. He's sick as hell. Back to your show. Griffin. There we're having go. well, I know we we're trying to book Eric Griffin. I wasn't sure if he. We're having Jerry wrong, O'Connell, but. and we're having the new voice of Cleveland coming on. I'm probably saying it wrong, but RF is here, the new voice of Cleveland, coming on the show. Cool. There yeah. you go, breaking My news name right is there. Cleveland Not Brown. I was a, I was a bit uh, upset by there not being really much glo- globe trotting in this movie because I really I really was expecting that. I was I was expecting them to do the same thing for the first movie and from what, what I've played of the Uncharted games that take inspiration. Uh, now, so bless, got, they didn't they didn't travel a whole lot horizontally, but again that cliff dive with the raft. Uh-huh. That's they, true. The same Most amount of vertical changes. travel. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't oh, equal the same amount of distance yeah. travel in Raiders. <laughs> uh, when we got to the temple, though, like I did appreciate a lot of the stuff that went on in the temple. Like when you got into that, uh, the sequence where Indy and Short Round are trapped in the uh, the room where the spikes uh, are coming down on them, and they're like, "Oh, we need to get out! We need to get out!" And they have only Willie to save them, uh, remove Willie from the whole situation. I was like, "This is awesome! This seems really fun." Uh, and like it's those moments in the movie, I really enjoyed. They made the temp- they made the temple feel really like. It lives up to the name. Like it is a temple of doom. Like everything in that everything in that temple felt like it was leading towards some type some type of doom. So where where you finally get to like the the hearts getting taken out and the the slave shit going on in the temple, it's like wow, this place is actually really serious. And also Freaky. this movie is very violent, way more it violent is. than the first one. And I was not expecting that. Yeah, uh, so much so that in 1989, Steven Spielberg said, I wasn't happy with Temple of Doom at all. It was too dark, too subter- subterranean, and much too horrific. I thought it outpoltered Poltergeist. There's not an ounce of my own personal feeling in Temple of Doom, oh, which shit. is fucking crazy. Um, and so the, the thing for me that I'm really shocked by is I don't know much about the reception of the Indiana Jones movies. I know that people don't like the fourth, but besides that, I don't really know which ones are loved and not loved and all this. And watching this when I finished it, I was like, oh, this is the one everyone must love. And then I looked on, I'm like, apparently it's like super controversial, but it's it's not like people hate it. It's just kind of it's mixed. It's in uh, between. Yeah. But so much I mean, so that Roger Ebert gave the, the film a perfect score, calling it the most cheerfully exciting, bizarre, goofy, romantic adventure movie since Raiders. And it's high praise to say that it's not so much a sequel as an equal. It's quite an experience. Oh. And I thought that was a, a pretty good uh, take on this movie because it kind of, to me, felt like, okay, let's do, let's do take two. Like what, we were almost there the first time, but let's get it right the second. And I disagree with Bless and Nick where I liked that this one wasn't like, let's get this thing to go to the next place to do the next thing to go to the next place. It was very much a lot more easy to follow knowing exactly what's going on the magic stuff made more sense except for the weird heart thing of him (laughs) being alive i didn't like that but um i thought everything around it was really cool but i think that this movie instead of going to that one or two or three extra places did a good job of upping the action ante of having that one more beat the part bless just talked about about the thing the ceiling coming down on them 
and her needing to help and then her getting stuck in there with them they get out of it quickly but i like that's like good pacing for that type of action scene and it's a similar thing with the raft they jump from the plane and then it's jumping off the cliff and it's just like i like that the movie was constantly surprising me with action that i wasn't expecting from it I get, I, I get that. I see that. And I think that's probably, that's probably why they programmed a lot of that in. So it would feel slightly different than the first one. But I don't know. To me, I just like, I'm just so used to indie being like globe trotting, right? Where he's just sort of like Bond, where we were going to like 15 different countries in the span of the movie that, I don't know. This one just felt like a little claustrophobic for me, but. Hello, uh, Greggy. It's time for the plot. Is it not time for the plot? Nikki, it's Nikki. It's Nick. Oh, before, before the, the plot, plot before the before the plot on this one, uh, I do want to read a couple more facts for background on this that I, I thought were really interesting. Did you guys know this was a prequel? I learned yeah. after the movie. Yeah. So, uh, not wishing not to that. feature the Nazis as the villains again, George Lucas, executive producer and co-writer, decided to regard this film as a prequel. It takes place in 1935 instead of 1936. Uh, Lawrence that. Kasdan, Lucas's collaborator on Raiders of the Lost Ark, turned down the offer to write the script. Um, and then yeah, they got people that worked with, with Lucas before on American Graffiti. Um, and they were hired based on their, their knowledge of India, which really shines through. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something. Lucas came up with the ideas that involved a religious cult devoted to child slavery, black magic, and ritual human sacrifice. Uh, Lawrence Kasdan was asked to write the script, and he said, I didn't want to be associated with Temple of Doom. I just thought it was horrible. It's so mean. There's nothing pleasant about it. I think Temple of Doom represents a chaotic period in both uh, Lucas and Spielberg's lives, and the movie very, is very ugly and mean-spirited. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> but the biggest thing to me is like, where the hell did Short Round go in a year? That's or, so yeah. dead. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Back oh, dead. Oh, you didn't that know yet. Yeah. Well, He's I'm sure someone. Boat. I'm sure someone came around and was like, "Hey, Indy, this kid should be in school. You can't <laughs> just be like, you can't just be like using this kid as." You know, one of your assistants. It got real simple. And he's like, well, I'm going back to America. And sure, I was like, I don't have a passport. He's like, well, peace. <laughs> I yeah, got to go. Sorry, bro. I got a life back there, man. I got this cool right. house. I walk now, around in a robe. Now it's plot time, Andy. To, uh, hello, Nikki. It's time for the plot. I'll do it. Hello, Nikki. It's me. Tell us the plot. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Ah, snake surprise. Who <laughs> the surprise? <sighs> The Paramount logo goes <laughs> uh, goes from uh, being the Paramount logo, and they do the same thing again, where it goes to that giant gong, and we get introduced to Willie, played by Kate Capshaw, who is singing Anything Goes in Mandarin. Uh, I like how this is actually plays out. I think it's cool they kind of break with reality. I, know, I never noticed this when I was a kid. The stage just becomes huge. It becomes this big, like, Busby Berkeley-style, like, number and then when it finishes it's just a tiny little stage that's in the club i thought that was pretty cool uh was, i thought here. it was distracting i thought it was so weird because they it's was that what was that was it fictional or was that real because they I go think, into the dragon mouth yeah and then there's a stage and then she comes out of the dragon mouth and people are watching i don't know i, I just i, don't, I feel I the big stage stylized. didn't exist i think that was just the grandeur nature of the performance yeah hmm. okay it breaks with anything goes but anything does go uh worth noting here that um and i don't know if she got billed as this uh on the prior film but kathleen kennedy associate producer on this film yeah associate crazy, producer crazy dude. to think about that and, and her uh, career growth in those two decades it's been beyond uh this number is stunning love it uh, as it wraps indy enters looking very good in that white dinner jacket to broker a deal with lao shay for the nur hachi uh willie has a dynamite drop in where she says archaeologists aren't they all just a bunch of old people looking for their mommies and then indy goes it's mummies, mummies. Great. That's, a really oh, right there. that's a joke hey, that right one there. Got me. That, that was the point where i was like oh this is gonna be a masterpiece yeah. nowadays <laughs> seth rogan would fart and they'd animate a bear behind him and they say that's comedy this was comedy all right yeah. this was comedy true. What? uh one of Lau's guys <laughs> one of Lau's uh, henchmen pulls a gun and indy pulls a small fork and then takes willie uh hostage with it and this is my first thing i was like why would you have him do this that's sort of like that makes the character a little less likable because he just randomly grabbed a person he's never met before and just takes her hostage oh you're uh, crazy we knew you know that indy wouldn't actually kill her we know that yeah but i mean he po he's like poking poking her in the side with a fork i mean he, let's put it this way at the very least he ruins her dress which is just not trust cool. me by the end of this That's movie cool. he's poking her with something else don't worry about it. damn his is it his ego no it's his throbbing erection when a male gets oh. excited the blood oh. goes to their penis and it gets engorged 
and oh. it just becomes rock fucking hard. When, when you started that <laughs> sentence, Discord kind of like paused, and I was like, "Please pause for the entire sentence." Yeah, <laughs> let's come back. He's come back. I'm like, that's how babies like are made. <laughs> um, cool. Well, picking right back up. Uh, let's see. Apparently, they're trying to broker a deal between the, for the Nurahachi for a diamond. Uh, but when they do the deal, uh, the do the deal, Indy gives them a toast with spiked. A spike drink that's poison. And they just start laughing at him. This was the first thing I ever learned as a kid, Greg. I was like, you know what? If you're doing a deal with some bad, some ill don't reputable people, don't drink anything because they can just poison you and then take the thing yeah. right back, which they do. And they and have that's a lazy the thing too. Like this comes back cool. to uh, right. Uh, it's a prequel, right? So then next time around, where Indy's almost eating the date and almost doing, he doesn't he almost drink something bad too in the next one. The wine. Yeah. Right. Uh, Come on. Come on. Uh, why? Where? Why oh, wasn't? Yeah. Why weren't you thinking, Indy? This already happened. I fucking know. plot holes all over the place. Indy I doesn't all learn. Over. He doesn't mm-hmm. learn. Uh, Indy tries threatening Willie again, but it doesn't work. So Wuhan comes to the rescue, which is one of his uh, his associates. Uh, he holds him at gunpoint, but then everything starts popping off, including bottles. And uh, Wuhan gets it in the chest. Uh, so Indy throws a flaming skewer through a motherfucker, and everything yeah. starts to pop Back! off. <laughs> which is just like violet. Uh, we get the old diamond. Uh, and the antidote gets kicked around the crowd thing, which I always remember from this movie. Um, and then Indy throws a crash symbol <laughs> at a motherfucker like the buzzsaw from Commando, and it just knocks the guy out. I'm just uh, thinking blue- of the MPAA being like uh, Steven Spielberg. Like, I understand you want this flaming skewer through this man's heart, but can like we can lower the rating if he's not screaming out, my insides are on fire, which is blood gut. Like, Steven, let's just fucking dial this down a little bit, Steven. Like, all of the sequence is so over the top. For this, for just this little like ballroom, it's so weird. I know, but Steve is like, no, they have to feel the pain. <laughs> no, I want him to die on set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Steve, so you can't we'll kill get a to man it in real life. We'll, we'll get to it later, but there are a couple points where it was too brutal the way they shot it, and they're like, okay, we have to in post edit some things to make it less fucked up and real looking of people dying. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, balloons stro- uh, drop and uh, someone brings a Tommy gun to the party. So Indy cuts the cord on the big gong and uses it as it rolls out uh, as cover and then so jumps cool. out the window. Yeah, with, this uh, is Willie. awesome. Really, really cool. Uh, they hang for a second and then a uh, short round of the rescue. He pulls the car around and they fall right in it like the blocking here. This is one of those uh, fun action sequences uh, that Blessing was talking about. Uh, let's see. And then I love, I'll never forget this. This is like the thing that always stands out when short round and when he's like, he's like, punch it and short round like, punches the the gas pedal but he's got blocks tied to his feet. Yeah. Awesome. I just I love that. I think it's so cool. And then, to me I was like, see, kids can't drive. I don't understand why parents don't let me drive. Yeah. <laughs> parents just don't eight, understand. 8 years old, they should be the limit, Nick. 8 years that's, old. That's what I've always said. Yeah. I'm saying if you uh, if I mean, you if you're old enough to drink, you're old enough to drive. That's what I always said. Good thing. to buy a pack of cigarettes at the local liquor store where they don't ever card you. Yep. Old enough to drive. I think it's back. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Jones grabs the antidote from Will- Willie's brazier, and they make their way to the airport with Lau and his men in tow. Uh, there's a, a fun part with Short Round <laughs> just punts a rickshaw out of the way, and I always thought that was kind of fun and playful. Uh, and then Jones, Willie, and Short Round accompanied by... Dan Aykroyd. Dan motherfucking Doing a Aykroyd. great British accent. He just blends right in. You'd never know. I would have never known. No idea he was in this movie. I've seen this movie probably at least at least five times in my life. No idea that was it. Really? Aykroyd. Till this yeah. this viewing is the one that got you? Because I, I was like, wait a minute, that sounds a lot like Dan Aykroyd doing that cheesy British accent that he does sometimes. And yeah. it was. It's it's just, all I mean, all I see, Greg Ray, Ray Zelinsky. Yeah, Tommy Fair. Boy. It's all yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. What, what does he say, Andy? What was like his, it's on the, the box? Oh yeah, it's on the but but like the the quote like the oh. slogan of the uh, his because cousin. I yeah because uh, because well, I forget nah, nah, never we mind. care so that you don't have to. It's uh, like uh, who, yeah, who yeah, else was a cameo like in this scene? Oh, George no. Lucas. George was Lucas it? was a missionary oh, in the background really? in the airport scene. Yeah, oh, that's pretty cool. Beats that he's Frank like, Marshall. He's writing cameo. the prequels. Jar Jar's there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they all board the plane. Indy, uh, as, as Indy uh, boards the plane, he shoots Lau and his men a smug look. It says, nice try, Lau Shay. And he says his whole name, just so you know that Love a second it. later, when he closes the door and it says Lau Shay air freight on it, you're like, he is fucked. Love I this love moment. it, man. That got Love me. it. Like to me, I was like, "This is the Indiana Jones I yeah, expected. Yeah. Like, this is what yeah. I feel like I was promised." And I was like, "I'm, I'm totally in." It's so then, cheesy and not anything like 
incredibly impressive, but it's still cool. Like you, yeah, it's good. like just to see the name on there, you're like, oh, Indy, you're in for it's a nice like reversal the, of fortune. The whole thing yeah. is such a back and forth kind of thing throughout that whole opening sequence because you have you have Indy sitting down to do the deal, and Indy's like, oh, I got you, and the other guy's like, no, I got you, and then Indy's like, no, I got a guy who's got you, and they have that whole back and forth, and the back and forth pretty much ends with that plane sequence of him closing the door and like us finally getting got by the by the bad guy. Like it's a cool payoff for that whole kind of circular experience. Mm-hmm. And then Lau and his men just laugh, and then I assume go and drink with Dan Aykroyd because he's a Ghostbuster. Mm-hmm. Uh, up in the air, Willie and Indy argue, and then Indy takes a nap, and we get uh, the only iconic map scene in the whole thing from Shanghai to somewhere near the Burma-India border. Uh, the pilots dump the fuel and parachute out, leaving Indy, Willie, and Short Round and the chickens aboard to fend for themselves. R.I.P. Chickens. I, don't I think really love room for you on the raft. <laughs> I really love the him falling asleep, and every time he sleeps, he has his hat like on his face. It's like that. Mm-hmm. It's little subtle character like design stuff, and like it's like costuming, but also blocking that I think is is really important to making a character feel iconic. And they do a good job with that. I bet you that plane smelled like shit, man. All the chicken shit There's everywhere. Chicken like, poop. yep, really, oh, dude. And people. Willie was there. Yeah, and Willie was man. there, just chilling. <laughs> uh, let's see. It, they dump the plane and they uh, they bounce out. Indy takes the pilot seat uh, as the engine gives out. And again, it's that same sound effect as the Millennium Falcon, which I think is always fun. Uh, and they bail out on a life raft, which Indy inflates right as it hits the snow-covered slopes below, leaving the plane to crash in the mountains behind them. Everything seems pretty okay until they go over the world's highest cliff uh, into rapids below. Uh, when they reach the shore, they're discovered by a shaman who takes them to his village. Uh, and when they get there, the people of the village see their arrival as a good sign. Turns out someone's been stealing all their kids and basically all their stones. And it's just, everything's <laughs> been kind of going pretty bad for them. Ah, this is what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Willie makes a big stink about eating the local cuisine. And, and, and Indy asks uh, if they can provide a guy to Delia. Again, this is that scene I was talking about before where he's like, dude, just eat it. Like, you're, you're embarrassing me and you're embarrassing yourself. Like, you got to do this. This is more than these people eat in a, in a week. Uh, which I always found touching when I was a kid. Uh, the palace, they want, uh, let's see, the shaman orders them to go to Pankot Palace on the way. And then and he's like, that's nowhere close to Delhi. And he's like, yes, but guess what? You, they've been doing some scary shit over there and you have been sent from Shiva uh, to help remedy the situation. And he pretty much just lays it down. Uh, the Maharaja from that uh, that palace came to their village and took uh, one of their sacred stones that protects the village, which is why everything has gone to shit for them. Everything died. Um, they've stolen a bunch of kids. It's basically going to mean the ruination of the village unless you help. Um, and, and he's like, I don't want to help. I guess there's a moment where he's like, I'm just in this for fame and fortune. And everyone's like, oh, no, Andy, we need character growth. Uh, later that night, <laughs> one of the kids uh, from, from the, from the uh, temple managed to escape. Uh, and he gets his way back to the village, and Indy spots him first, and the kid hands him a torn piece of cloth, which depicts Shiva giving uh, Sankara the sacred stones, and then Indy realizes he needs to get his shit together and go help. Uh, Short Round comes up, as if that wasn't enough. Short Round's like, hey, by the way, I just talked to that kid, and there's a whole bunch of more kids over there, so we should probably do something, right, Indy? And Indy's like, damn it, we have to. Uh, we gotta go. That was terrifying. Like, yeah. seeing that, that kid walking up to the village and having his having the marks on his back and then falling in front of Indy, I, th- I thought that was, like... Intense. A lot, yeah. Like, yeah. Lot. like, imagine you're watching as an adult. Imagine when we were watching this as kids. Like, this was one of those movies I watched, and like I've talked about my. It forms my impression for the rest of my life of what Indiana Jones is, but also is like legit terrifying at moments. Like, I remember constantly getting tensed up when that happened, when the monkey's skull gets pulled apart, when they're in the bug bug tunnel, like the I, bug, I, oh, the bug tunnel, the real bug bugs. Tunnel. Fuck the bug tunnel is all I'll say. I'll take that snake pit any day over the bug tunnel. No, you're but wild. But we'll get to that. No way. Same. We'll get to it. Uh, we do have a lot here. Ways. We get some uh, We get some information here. It's coming up, but I'll, I'll just put it here. So uh, Willie says, what Sankara? And, and Indy says, fame and... Or, sorry. Um, Short Round says, what Sankara? And he said, Indy says, fame and glory, kid. F- fortune and glory. Uh, and then Willie rides an elephant backward, and they all they get all set off for Pink Cop Palace. Uh, Willie gets knocked off her elephant into the water, and they decide to camp there for the night, which turns into Willie's house of horrors as she grabs first a vampire bat, then a monkey, then a big lizard, then an owl, and finally a freaking kimono dragon. And she's just running around screaming her head off. And Indy's Yo. like, they're always making noise. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> there's a problem the, there. The bat fucking got me. Didn't expect it. And like she's putting up the clothes and all of a sudden pulls up this Wah! bat and it shows it again. And it's like just see this like I hold moose every once in a while and I see him and I just think of like he's a small dude. He can't really hurt me, but like he could pee on me if he wanted, yeah. or you could kind of maybe like nip or something if he went crazy and feral out of nowhere. And I'm like looking at this fucking bat. I'm like, this thing could kill you. Like, <laughs> I, like there's no getting out of this thing alive. But Nick, uh, what the, was the uh, what was the line that you just said? Uh, Indiana Jones' favorite, uh, most favorite quote that you just said? Uh, fortune and glory, kid. Fortune and glory. I could have sworn you said something right before that that sounded like you were trying to make an Indiana Jones quote. And it just didn't work at all. I'll watch. Oh, it, I'll I watch said, the tape. What's Sankara? It was Sankara is the name of the, I think the the person who got the stones. They call them the Sankara stones. No, never mind. Sorry, I'm trying uh, to get a lot of this together. In fact, head. I want to give you about this part because it's one of the first we get. So. Willie Scott screams a grand total of how many times in this movie? Oh, Jesus. 300. 34. Um, 71. Let me guess. Ah, Jesus. 78. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. 71. Uh, what's the body count in this movie, Andy? Bodies. In the well, we don't know how many of those kids are dead. Mm. That's true. You know what I mean? I might say 22. Of them. Could be chambers of them. I'm going to guess. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 49. Oh, okay. 43. 43. Oh. 20 by Indiana Jones. Oh, damn. I only, I only yeah, count guy. his kills. I only count his kills. He's over Call of Duty kill streak. I got a <laughs> follow up to the, the screaming bit. DJ Kento in the chat uh, talked about earlier that in the Lego Indiana Jones games, her like special ability was just screaming. That was just all she did. Yep. Makes sense. Makes, Makes a sense. lot of sense. Uh, we get a little backstory here on how Short Round uh, met Indy. Indy caught him picking his pocket, uh, and they've been best friends ever since. And again, I gotta say, I love. Uh, I'm probably gonna slaughter his name, but Kihu Kwan's performance here, uh, he's awesome, and I love him in the Goonies. And I was like, when I was a kid, I was like, this is so cool because it's like being, you know, I like identified with him because I was probably around his age when he was filming this. I was like, it'd be so cool to go on an adventure with Indiana Jones, and I hope he's in everyone uh, thereafter. Uh, anyway, um, Indy tells Willie about the legend behind the uh, the five sacred Sankara stones, uh, which were given to Sankara by Shiva to combat evil. But if you go astray, it can be a horribly dark power. Um, so watch out. Uh, and then we get a fun part with Willie and a giant python, which Indy has a guttural reaction to. And I think this is kind of cool because it's a little callback to the fact that he hates snakes. So everything else is totally mm -hmm. fine. But when he sees or the snake, he's like, whoa, it's, Nick, you know, or call forward. Back in time, right? Cool. You're mm -hmm. absolutely cool. right, Andy. I'm sorry. I apologize. Now we, we see this. We see the source. Strike of that it. from the record. We see the source. Mm -hmm. Strike. Struck. Strucken. Um, they arrive at the palace the next day and spot a bad omen. So their guides bounce. Uh, they go on by foot. Once at the palace, they're greeted by Chatterlal, uh, prime minister to the Maharaja. Uh, that night, they uh, they meet uh, a general from from England, which I always thought was weird. I was like, "What the fuck is this guy in here?" And then, of course, it's a payoff for at the end. Um, but it was also, it, like I'm with you, where I was like, "What the like? This seems weird." And like, why yeah. are they adding this? But when he shows up at the end, I definitely was like, "Fuck yeah, it's that yeah. guy." Yeah. <laughs> He's that back. Sense. He's back. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, that night, they, they meet the Maharaja, who Willie at first is interested in because she's kind of they're kind of painting her as a gold digger uh, until she realizes that he is a child, uh, and then she's a little put off by that. Uh, part of her almost like, Meh, but then the other part of her is like, no, it's too young. Uh, then the feast starts, and this is the thing we're all talking about here. Where first it's snake surprise. What's the surprise? A bunch of mini snakes in here that we're going to be alive, <laughs> and it was fucking it's just, awful. So awful on so many levels, and, and I remember Greg. I don't know if you remember this or not, but this did this scene just not like? I would like cover my eyes during this scene because I was like, oh, I yeah. can't believe you would like when they cut the snake open, all the other ones slither out. I'm like, what the fuck? fuck. But like thought, the whole thing is gross. This, it, it's, this is designed to gross kids out. Totally. Where eyeball soup, eyeball soup when she yells soup. at that. Eyeball soup is when I had been like as an adult. I'm like. I don't want the fucking live eels or whatever coming out of the snake, but whatever. Eyeball soup. <laughs> I'm not going to eat the eyeball. Yeah, all, yeah, all yeah, exactly. the soup. Can, Can, I get some salt? Can I get some salt over here? <laughs> I, I will say that the uh, the giant beetles did look somewhat appetizing. Uh, no, they, the they look like they're I know the gorilla. I would have ate the gorilla. Uh, you would have eaten the, the, the chilled monkey brains blessing? Yeah, the oh. chilled monkey brains I would have fucked with. Fuck, fair no. point. Fire. Maybe it tastes like uh, some sort of uh, melon ice cream. Who knows? Tim Gettys. Uh, I, I do have a question. I have a science with Kev question, but he's not here. But science, should I call him? Science. Science with Kev. Let, let's not, I'm let's not, not here. <laughs> uh, I'm walking uh, Cecil. I, <laughs> am I alone in thinking that, like, snakes lay eggs? 
So they collect eggs. No, they, they eat eggs. Uh, no, they, they, they do lay eggs. They lay a clutch of eggs. As well. Yes, yeah. these weren't. The snake surprise wasn't a pregnant snake. It wasn't a snake. pregnant well, snake. It was eels. It wasn't even snakes, right? It was like. Oh, it, I always thought they were snakes, but you're absolutely right. And Tim, you're absolutely right, too. Snakes do lay eggs. They lay I think they were snakes. If I'm not mistaken, pythons lay a big clutch of eggs. You have to, like. No, I don't. Yeah, I mean, but the snakes kind of come out. But, yeah, right, so wait, were you first off, the, the ch- channel correct us here is if, yeah. if it's leeches or uh, uh, eels or whatever. But also keep in mind, like, when you get a turducken, it wasn't at one point all three of those animals in existence. You can kill something <laughs> and put things inside it and serve it that way. Yeah, I just right. always thought it was a pregnant snake that they had no. killed and no. then cut it open and all the little baby snakes came out. No, this makes <laughs> it even worse. They, how they get all the snakes in there? You <laughs> shove it in there. You ever stuff a turkey? Hey, Same thing. It. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we stuff turkeys? Because it's good. When you cut it out, you see the layers like a, like an old tree blessing, like an old tree. Oh, I digress. Uh, <laughs> as just, we're going, I'm, I'm just as, blown away. The next I mean, <laughs> snake was pregnant. <laughs> dude, no, I, did, I, did well, I mean, I saw this movie when it I was is, four it is years old. That way. I do understand how that, like, how you come down. Because I mean, that was even, my first thought. Oh, God. I, I was like, oh, just, maybe I have a lot of snakes in it. That's weird. Maybe I have no, a lot of snakes. No, you guys are absolutely right. I just think when I saw this as a four year old, I just thought, well, little tiny th- versions of the big thing coming out of the thing's stomach equals pregnant. I did not. <laughs> you guys just blew my mind. I had no idea. <laughs> Two things were in this Dan Aykroyd, and then they, <laughs> they just stuffed eels into a snake for no reason. I'm DJ Kanto, strike here from the record. But a, a thing of one of the trivia that I had today, like the, it was them talking about them as baby snakes, which I get. You're you're right. Yeah, they could have put baby snakes in a dead snake. But... Well, they, the right. guy says it's called snake surprise. That's literally the line that I wrote down because he says yeah. that I'm quoting him as snake surprise. When he says, "What's the surprise? Surprise? Pretty surprising. I, smaller snake snakes in there. Okay, Whatever. hold on, time out right there. You got a problem already. The dish is called snake surprise, not snake yeah. surprise. It's a singular snake. There's one sta- yeah. snake he's talking about. I mean, yeah. surprise. surprise coming out of the snake. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. It word. could be eels. Yeah, that's a good yeah, point. But is it possessive? Eels. Snakes surprise. No. <laughs> well, even then, it w- I mean, well, you, but you're saying snakes plural possessive? Exactly. I don't know. I'm glad we're getting to the bottom of this. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to so get in confused. here. I'm going to get some screen grabs. While you're assets, doing that. Bear, warm up the asset machine. Oh, oh, God. God. I will know that. That's it. Warming up. Indian chatter are having a little verbal jousting here over the table where Indy's like, hey, like some shit's going down. I know it's going down. And Chatter's like, no, it's all not going down. It's just hearsay and rumors and people are reporting wrong. And he kind of throws it back in his face at one point where he's like, I've heard some shit about you, Indy. And he's like, yo, they just threatened to cut my dick off, right? It was not a big deal, but it was, was misunderstanding. Good. And he goes, this is a misunderstanding too. And then the the uh, the young boy Maharaja is basically like, hey, I would never allow for any of that to happen, putting a pin in the whole discussion. Um, uh, later that night, uh, they go back to their rooms and Indy, I guess is like, Hey, I've got such great chemistry with this person so far. I'm going to try to have sex with her. And Willie's like, I, I guess that's going to be fine too. Cause I, who cares? Right. So they go, uh, he goes into the room and they have a little bit of flirty flirty. And then for no reason, Willie just gets really mad at him. Um, and then I guess the writer's he's a little like, too cocky. conflict here. He's a little too cocky. Is he? She's because like, he was she's... being, he was joking. Yeah, but she's like, look, I'm not that easy, all right? Like, you you know, you think I'm just going to do this, even though, yes, I'm super flirty with you, and also, yes, this do does really come out of nowhere. It's not like a Leia Han situation where this has been leading up to the moment where the insertion begins. No, it's just like <laughs> out of nowhere, we're we're supposed to care and want them to bang? No, man, I don't give a mm-hmm. fuck about that. I mean, it's, like, it's like when you're on vacation, you know, and you meet somebody, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you're both at the mm-hmm. same hotel, and... And it's like, well, we're both here. We're both in Florida. Exactly. We're only going to be in Florida. Florida. What the hell else are we going to do in Florida except <laughs> try to make a baby? Also, these, did these did they take a shower at, up to this point? Do we know? Uh, I think that, yeah, they I mean, shower for dinner. Yeah, he, he his hair looks good. Yeah, down. his he hair looks good. Fresh. She's in the outfit. I do love, by the way, that he just, um, and I could be wrong about this, so chat, let, let Greg know, and he'll let me know 25 minutes from now. But I love that his shirt is his normal shirt. That he just buttoned up and like put a bow tie in, and it kind of serves both purposes. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's how they had. Because I think he takes the bow tie off and opens it up, and that's like the shirt he wears for the rest of the movie. Um, uh, uh, I've sent see. over the thing to Barrett. I won't lie to you. I would have told you dead to rights it was eels or something, but this looks like a snake. That looks yeah. like a baby snake coming out of his snake there. Snake, it's a snake. Thank Again, you, thank you, Tim. It's I don't know. Thanks, Tim. That was really well. You're really welcome, spot everyone. On. Uh, I do want to note there's one. one time. <laughs> <laughs> there's one great line here where Willie's like, um, what I wear to bed might shock you. And Indy goes, nothing shocks me. I'm a scientist. 
<laughs> yeah, you are, Indy. Yeah, you are, Indy. Uh, oh, let's but see. The they almost bang, here, uh, but they're both too conceited and self-centered. Uh, so they decide to adjourn to their respective rooms, during which one of the uh, paintings in the back kind of comes to life. Uh, I know it's not, it doesn't really come to life, but I always thought this blocking was really cool because it's kind amazing. Of like, he just this was comes out and like, holy shit, that's so cool. Um, I love and- it. I, like that's such a great, great, like uh, such a bad scene that was great payoff at the end of it. I was like, this guy is here to fight. Love it. Didn't see him there. Fantastic. Uh, of course, as Indy's being uh, strangled to death in one of the rooms, uh, Willie's outside screaming at his door. She's had enough. I could have been your greatest. And then Indy breaks three, free, grabs his whip, whips the dude around the neck, and then somehow gets the whip in the ceiling fan and strangles the guy. Hell yeah. And Tim, I don't know if you know this or not, but ceiling fan technology in 1930s is way not more sturdy than it is right now. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like idle hands, Greg. We know. Yeah, exactly. I loved how Discord cut off when Nick said, look, Indy, I will be your greatest f- ever (laughs) (laughs) perfect uh of course then indy goes into uh willie's room looking to make sure that there's no one's uh skulking about there um and she's all pissed off she's like i'm right here and then he looks over at the statue and i do actually kind of like this a lot where he looks at the statue she's like what like i'm here i'm right here what the hell are you doing to that statue and then he presses the statue's boobs and then it goes in and then later willie tries the next one and nothing happens she's like i don't know she's all grossed out to touch those titties she wouldn't be come on now let's come on even in come on now uh i have something for you here from the indiana jones wiki all right it looks like we're we figured this out uh the dish is coiled wrigley's coiled wrigley's also known as snake surprise was a dish served at the guardian of the tradition dinner given at the pennock uh, or pancott palace in 1935 as the second course it was live baby eels stuffed inside a moist boa constrictor wow. one of the guests yeah. the dinner, a merchant was very pleased with the dish was served another guest enjoyed the eels with great gusto <laughs> <laughs> that's a good I eye i would i would not have assumed that when I saw the scene, I just assumed snakes. That's why just, in reviews here to answer that and help you understand. We know directions. you care so much. And about with that, this. let me tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by me undies. I love me undies. I've been talking about them forever and for good reason. They are some of the softest undies. They are the softest undies I have ever worn. And on top of that, they are uh, most of my favorite apparel in general. I am wearing the socks, lounge pants, undies, and shirts always. I'm Tim Gettys. It's what I do. I like being soft and I like having soft things on my body. And me undies helps me do that every single day of my life. And with a whole bunch of fun prints right now, I got some dinosaurs who doesn't want some t-rex down there i know i do and i do that and it's great um there's fun prints you can get whether it's licensed stuff like star wars or just crazy things like like pizza it could be there or if you're not the the bold adventurous type you can just get classic colors there's black there's white there's blue there's there's all the colors you can go to me and check out all the different things there's definitely a design that speaks to you i absolutely love them and you will love them too and if, if you don't guess what there is uh, a, an entire problem-free philosophy where if you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, they'll refund or exchange it. No caveats, no questions. To get 15% off your first order and free shipping, go to meundies.com slash morning. That's meundies.com slash morning to get 15% off your first order and free shipping. Next up, shout out to keeps two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35 more than 50 million men in the u.s suffer from male pattern baldness there are only two fda approved medications that can prevent hair loss and keeps offers both uh nick and andy have been going through these issues for a long time and they decided to do something about it and not to be a part of these statistics uh keeps offers a simple stress-free way to keep your hair convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months you don't have to leave your house it's low cost treatment started just ten dollars a month and keeps offers generic versions discreet packaging and proven results uh prevention is key treatments can start four to six months to, or can take four to six months to see results so act fast if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss go to keeps.com slash morning to receive your first month of treatment for free that's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash morning to get your first month free k-e-e-p-s dot com slash morning keeps.com slash morning and we're back uh they head inside well short round first grabs all of uh, all of their gear and they head inside once geared up and short round makes what would uh be the most traumatizing um uh, observation of my young life uh which is that the ground uh tim sounds like fortune cookies when they're stepping on it now if any of you motherfuckers say that to me 
I am going to beeline back the way we came. I will not mm -hmm. deal with this ever because once they light a match and look down, it is a room full of nightmares. It is just <laughs> centipedes and potato bugs or whatever the hell those big ones are called. And I'll be like this. No. Potato I, the, I, what, I forget what those big ones are called, but the, the ones that like look like they're sort of like a light uh, a light tan color. Oh, I thought you were stick talking bug? about the stick bug that's on our hand. Bug, yeah. Is that what it is? Stick bug? So I don't know why I said potato yeah. bug. I bet but you it looks like a little roly poly. I would love to yeah. do that, Nick. It's if you're like stepping on like bubble wrap. You're just kind of running around. Oh, <laughs> Andy. Oh yeah. The, until you until you take your you, that was so much fun, Andy. Thanks so much for that. You go home. I go home. You get a pizza. You you go down. You go. I'm not. I'm a little bloated. You unbuckle your pants, and a fucking bug just comes right out of it and slaps your face off. Jesus, why happens. would I feel yeah. bloated? Yeah, because they go up, they go up your once. leg, Andy. They go up your leg. Oh, Willie's still okay. picking them out of her dress wow. to this day. Jeez, this Louise. was another example of the like, oh, this seems racist. Like, oh no, it is racist. We're gonna be like, oh, it's fortune cookies. It's yeah. like, yeah, you're getting closer. Yeah. And then he says it again, and you're like, you didn't need to do that. You yeah. didn't need to do that. Now, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Could fortune cookies popcorn. are those not a Western invention? invention? Like I thought, fortune cookies were, were a thing that came out of of not China. I think you're probably. I mean, either right. way, you're still, probably right, but I it's mean, our, but it's our connection to the Chinese culture. <laughs> so yeah, it's place like, of origin, U.S. and California. That's yeah. what I yeah. blessing. Yeah, that's that's we, we learned that from Iron Man three. Blessing. That's where we learned that. It's that's like it's we, like yeah. Andy. What does the floor feel like? A crunchy tortilla. Like that's basically what that <laughs> is. <Yeah>. Like. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> right? Like, it's true. <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> it's true. Uh, no, you nailed it. Yeah. And then you say it twice. <laughs> oh. Uh, let's see. Uh, they go into the next chamber in short round, accidentally trips a uh, switch on the floor, which then locks them in and then uh, starts the ceiling moving down to crush them, along with some spikes coming out of the floor and ceiling. And this just is like uh, a nightmare predicament that they're in. Of course, they scream for Willie. Willie spots the creepy crawlers. Uh, and if, again, guys, I'm sorry, Tim, Greg, you're stuck in this room. If it involves me having to walk through it's these slimy. things. I will report back to Jen and Gia that there was just nothing I could do. <laughs> yeah, totally. It'll be like in Predator. Where remember when we played Predator and then one of us would die and run away? We'd be like, I'll take care of your wives. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Uh, of course, Willie has to. I'll tell, you, the, I'll tell them you died violently. Or violently. Yeah. Be like, and, like, Nick would always say, Annie, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, when if you ever get a girlfriend, I'll take care of her, okay? <laughs> like, I'm dead. What do you mean? I don't have one yet. I don't need it. It's a service I don't need to take advantage of. Uh, of course, uh, Willie has to reach through one of the holes to grab the, the lever that'll open up the door. And I'm like, oh, God, this is just horrible for me. And when she reaches the first one, though, it's a great little jump scare where Air, Indy's hand reaches out and grabs it. He goes, the other one, the other one. Uh, she reaches through, finally pulls the lever, runs in with, she's like, get him off me, get him off me. Uh, they're excited for a second until she triggers it one more time. Indy grabs her. They run out of the chamber. Uh, and then we have a little, uh, little nod to the first movie where instead of grabbing his whip, Indy reaches through and grabs his hat and pulls it back as the door slams shut. Um, let's see. They come across an underground temple where the uh, thuggy ceremony is taking place that involves uh, worshiping Kali. It's like dark, a dark uh, sort of thing, evil thing going on. Uh, and it's ter it terrified me as a kid, partially because the lighting is scary, but mostly because mm -hmm. uh, the big bad guy here, Mola Ram, uh, uses the power of the stones to pull a fucking dude's heart out from his chest while it's still beating and then drops him into a pit of fucking lava as the man is screaming bloody murder for like 20 minutes. This is dope. And as this fuck. is a PG it movie. Is dope Am I right, fuck. Tim? Mm -hmm. PG movie. That's what this is. Yeah, it ends no, up being PG. Isn't it PG thirteen? It didn't exist. No, no, this caused the this caused. PG oh, so this invented PG, not PG. Okay, gotcha. Damn. No, 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 this no, no, invented no, no. PG thirteen, but it wasn't. They didn't market PG thirteen. Gotcha. Spielberg just said, "Hey, in case this happens again in the future, you should have another rating between PG and R." I guess. Gotcha. And that makes sense. This would have been yeah, PG thirteen though. For sure. like whatever you say, boss. Parts of this should yeah. be R. Like, I was shocked by how violent this movie was. But can you imagine if they went all the way when Homeboy gets fucking put to the steamroller? Like, how bad that could have looked had they yeah. gone for yeah. more realism? Because it was like Indiana a smear of blood. <laughs> yeah, they were like, why don't we put some... And Spielberg in his dark, he's like, why don't we put some fucking brains on that thing? I was like, no, Steve. <laughs> I think we should throw... I think Let's you, make hey. a PG-13 film if we're going like, to say they need like, it. 
We he just walks made over to Spielberg the... this fucking grotesque human being. <laughs> what if he fucking? What if he threw a flaming skewer through his fucking heart first, and then he went through the, the meat grinder? No, I have see, three dead goats in my car. We could throw it on the fucking. <laughs> like, no. so if he dropped him out of a plane and saw his fucking bones <laughs> turned to moisture. <laughs> Steve. Uh, after He's the ceremony, <laughs> after they bring uh, after the ceremony, they bring the three stones together, and as they do so, the uh, the diamonds inside start glowing. Um, and then Indy's like, "I'm gonna go down and get them." And uh, Willie says, "Hey, you could get don't go down there. You could get killed chasing after your damn fortune and glory." And Indy says, "Maybe, but not today." And then he goes, "Smoochy, smoochy, Greg." Mm. And they kiss. Mm, I didn't Give hear it, it no. called Greg. Give it to us, Greg. Do it better. Do it better. Oh God! Thank you. Oh, Thank Lord. you. God, that makes me not. That makes me want to just lock myself in, in like a dark closet forever. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Indy again uses his whip to swing down, which is cool. But this time, Tim. This time mm-hmm. he unfurls it. Yes, and I'm he like, does. You have a mastery of this whip, my friend. It's cool. I love the the whip usage in this movie compared to the last is ten out of ten par excellence. Uh, he uses uh, he swings down, grabs the three stones, and stuffs them into his little satchel. Uh, and then he hears children screaming. So instead, he I, and I like this because this is the moment where he's like, oh, I guess I'll just leave. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, children screaming. That's usually a sign that I should probably get involved, right, Andy? And they can hear the screaming up there, right? Willie can hear it. She's like, where is he going? <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here. Get out of fuck here. those kids. <laughs> Uh, so when he goes down to investigate, uh, he sees uh, baddies grab Willie in short round. Um, Indy discovers that there is a mine downstairs that's being uh, where there are a bunch of children who are being used as slave labor to mine. We're not quite sure what yet. Um, and Indy, instead of really getting involved, just takes a big rock and throws it at the chief guard. And then everyone's like, <laughs> what? Do you think was going to happen there, buddy? What was the plan uh, there? He, yeah, <laughs> as he turns around, 15 other guards are there, and he's like, well, poop. Uh, I need 15 I more rocks. <laughs> exactly. I need 15 more rocks. <laughs> uh, let's see. Indy and Mola Ram chat. Uh, they have a little chat while Indy's tied to a stone. Uh, basically, Ram is like, listen, this mine is operation. All uh, is all for looking for the last of the two stones. There were five in total. We have three. We need two more, and they're down there somewhere because, uh, you know, as our – as our country and our society was raided, we hid them down there so that uh, outsiders couldn't get them. Uh, they force Indy to drink uh, from just a horrifying half rotted skull. Uh, where, but when he refuses, the little Maharaja comes and uses a little voodoo doll to torture him into submission. And at didn't this point, expect I was, that. Didn't yeah, expect the voodoo same, doll probably, at all in this probably, movie. <laughs> you probably didn't expect that, Tim, because voodoo doll is not necessarily synonymous with Indian culture, <laughs> but I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't ever usually, uh, uh, I don't think they're synonymous with Hinduism, but whatever. Um, let's see that happens. And then, uh, they make Indy eventually drink what they call the black sleep, which is from Kali. And then he becomes a zombie, uh, short round tries to inter- uh, intervene as well. And they, they whip him a little bit. Uh, and then Indy gets whipped too. Uh, and then short round, Hold oh, on. and then they take the, the whipping scene, uh, first off, ridiculously graphic and their commitment to him having like lacerations for the rest of the movie was like all right that was a choice for a pg movie um but there's a fact that i read that i was like this is just completely insane uh while filming the whipping scene the crew played a practical joke on harrison ford while he was chained to a large stone someone appeared dressed in a leather dominatrix outfit. she proceeded proceeded to whip him saying that's for hanover street the worst movie I ever saw. Wow. She continued whipping him for Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope for making all that money. This person was Barbara Streisand. Shut the what? front door. Bro, what? The Streisand I'm so fact. confused. We're always talking about it. And it's not over. It's not over. She was not alone, <laughs> Streisand. Streisand uh, brought her friend Carrie Fisher, who, th- who then threw herself in front of Ford to protect him. And Irvin Kirshner chided director Steven Spielberg saying, is this how you run your movies? The entire sequence of this was filmed. (laughs) First off, if I'm Harrison Ford and my day started, I'm like, this is going to be a normal day. We're going to do the whipping scene. And Barbara Streisand (laughs) shows up in a dominatrix outfit and Carrie Fisher's (laughs) there to save me. I'm like, I don't know what's happening, but I got to pay my (laughs) agent more because this is a fucking great deal right now. That's so bizarre. I don't, that's really weird. Well, Barbara Streisand was, was a huge celebrity back then. 
So she can pretty much do whatever she wants. You know what it's like, guys? It's like when Daniel Craig was just the voice of a stormtrooper one time because he just happened to be uh, on Pinewood true. sets. You know what I mean? It's like Man, this clip is everyone. on YouTube, I don't, too. I don't know if that's the, is the it same. Is really? Put it in yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put it in right the same. Yeah. Bear is not the same. <laughs> Barbara no. Streisand is one of those weird people to me where like I have no ability to pinpoint her in time. You'd be like, oh, yeah. she was big back then. I'm like, was she big in the 80s? I didn't know that. Like, Man, I you could, totally said Barbara Streisand was like a 60s 70s. person. You could no, show me a 70s. photo of Barbara Streisand like in the 1920s, and I'd be like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. For, con- for context, Barbara Streisand, I think one of her one of her bigger roles was she did a the then remake of A Star is Born, which then the newest remake of A Star is Born is sort of more based off of, which was Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Back in the day, it was her and Chris Christopherson, and they made an awesomely hot couple. It was great. Holy shit, this there is, is wild. This is wild. That's Barbara Streisand. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> he's just like, I at this point, this he's like, here. I'm a little I'm a little turned on by this. That's what Harrison Ford's thinking. Maybe I'm just projecting. I so don't he didn't know. know. No, it's a practical joke. And there's Princess Leia saving the day. If but you jump it? yet at like the oh my God. minute mark, I think that guy comes in <laughs> that you're talking about that yells at them. Like, he's he's living running. his best life. Oh, this is amazing. This is awkward. I Anything can't goes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. This Harrison fucking movie like, sucks. Cur- Why he's are like, we making it? Fucking relax, bro. It's okay. They're my homies. Don't worry about it. Uh, let's see. So Indy is now a zombie. Uh, short round, of course, has to go to the mine to get whipped a little bit more while Indy takes his shirt off so uh, we can watch Willie be sacrificed. And I'll tell you what, man. I never really thought of Harrison Ford as being kind of bowed out until recently watching these last two movies. He was he had a good he physique on him. Were they born? Thank born you. in labs. You, now it's time to rank those abs. Welcome back to Rank Those Abs, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Nick Scarpino. Uh, right now, the leaderboard is just Indiana Jones shirtless in the first movie. But I'll say he had a little bit more bulk on him in this one, Andy. What do you think? It looked, I mean, he looked ripped as hell. His arms looked phenomenal. I didn't even want to talk about the abs because I thought the arms looked great, especially, well, this whole sequence, he looks phenomenal. But on the rope bridge towards the end, that's what where his arms off? are shining. We're talking so sleeves good. off, Tim. We're talking the light hitting the, the biceps and the triceps at the perfect angle. <laughs> You're getting perfect shading. Uh, I mean, th- I know this is an abs show, but I thought the, the arms looked phenomenal as well. He was I'm number you. one. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, wow. number one. It was a Temple fantastic him. showing for him. By Harrison Ford, I was like, you've always been an attractive guy, but like, damn, this damn, is bro. probably the, yeah. the best I've ever seen you. Good on you. Uh, let's see. The Indy helps lower Willie into the fire pit as Short Round tries to break out Indy of his spell. Uh, actually, I think Short Round broke out here. Excuse me. I missed that. Uh, he uses, they gave him a, like a rock cutter, or like one of those, uh, a chisel. And he was like, oh, I guess I could use this on my chains. And just and none of these other kids figured this out. So he That's the problem free. with these other kids. You know what I mean? Like, Dumbass. where was their head at? They could easily overpower him as they're about to find out. You know, you're going to lose a few kids in the battle. Sure. But let me tell you, you got to be free. I like to think of it, Greg, as Short Rounds has been around more. You know what I mean? Short Rounds has been he's like... He's seen it. The, he knows. He grew he knows up on the that. hardcore streets of Shanghai, and he's yep. been Indy's dude, and they've probably killed a few people together. Short Rounds honestly. killed at least 20 people. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Sure. Okay, yeah, for sure. sure. And by the way, we're going to get to the part in. later where he starts throwing fucking spin kicks at people, and it's everything. Yes, he uh, fucking does, and it's awesome. Does. Like, I'm so is. happy they didn't just make him like, oh, he's a stupid kid you have to take care of. It's like, no, he's a badass little yeah. adventurer. No escort mission here. Uh, let's see. He breaks out. He goes up and he starts trying to reason with Indy. He's like, Indy, I love you. Don't do this. I'm your best friend. Uh, and Indy uh, pushes him aside or actually punches him down. And then short rounds like, dude, I'm sorry. I have to do this. Uh, but he takes a torch and just burns him with it. (laughs) And then Indy's like, uh, no, I'm going to grab this kid. and I'm going to throw him over. And he fakes like he's going to throw him over. Then he goes, just kidding, kid. It's me. I'm back. Winks at him. And then they just start. And then it's it's straight up. The red throne room scene from Last Jedi. Just the yes, two of them turning just around two of and just them. fucking. It, it perfectly matches with any music you throw at it. Like, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> there's no way yeah. Willie's making it out of that, by the way. Like, no. they're going around here into the lava pit. And if I. For in any regular situation where that's happening, that person's not coming out the same person. They're changed. Hell no. Nah, they're changed. Sure, they're burned. Sure. The metal cage that she's in. Oh, yeah. Like she's getting burnt. Attached to her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Definitely the metal there is absorbing a lot of heat and it's causing scars, like mentally and physically, you know. Uh, Imagine they, how terrifying that'd be. It'd be horrifying. Horrifying. I, um, I want to just give a, a major shout out to the set design of pretty much the rest of the movie from this point out. But like this, the Temple of Doom itself, of course, the mine 
is insane. The minecart stuff is insane. Bless, oh, I'm sure you fucking loved that. Oh yeah, uh, no, I fuck with it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Big, big Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong vibes. Country, baby. Yeah, it's like that's where I got it. <laughs> uh, that's what was so great, so cool, and, and a fun little uh, production trivia here is that like they had the entire set uh, surrounded by minecart rails. So like to get the the biggest set that they possibly could, like their entire production studio was surrounded by this this track. And as it would go around, they would change the lighting and colors to make it feel even bigger. New. Like they're oh, going through cool. a bunch of different turns and corners, but it's really just the same thing over and over. And the the sound of the Minecraft was from roller coasters at Disneyland. Not Minecraft. Minecart. Uh, yeah. Minecart. Minecart. Yeah. Minecart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that stuff's cool. But I want to give a shout out just to the 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 big like sacrificial area that they're in with the with the pit of fire in the middle of it the design of this whole place is so cool with like the the big gap in the middle of the room yep. with the the dudes in, on one side kind of like bowing you, you can tell they don't really want to be there and then the you know the main stage almost but i love the big giant dude statue with like hands like holding skulls and that's where the chain's coming out of and they have the big like gear to turn to, to pull the, it's like i just love when there's set design that you look at it and you're like, okay, cool. I get what's happening to make this thing work. And it looks fucking awesome. And yeah. every time that they're on the thing and like the way that they use it in action scenes to have the tension of rising and, and falling of in the fire, but also just people like getting hit by it all. It's like, this is so, I feel so like yeah, that was the thing I was most impressed by. This shit? Like, like <laughs> the, the, the way in which they, they framed the action so that the whole thing was trying to keep her, trying to keep her uh, lowering down while Indian short round are trying to keep, raise her back up. And that culminates in somebody getting stuck under the thing. Thus like yeah. have like having it stay there. I thought that was really cool. Which I'm not sure. Did that kill him or did he come back later? I think that no, he comes back. I don't back think later, we ever right? got he that comes, resolved. I he, think comes he comes back. back did he come back into the, uh, okay. yeah. the ladder sequence? Right. Yeah. Kind of I, thought, I thought he was still there until now. He's just like he's just been down there <laughs> for years. Day. They keep feeding him. Just, Steven! Just, Steven's like, no, you'll burn in there. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm gonna take you and just put like, you in a mulch with a fucking wood chipper. <laughs> no, Steven, they didn't have wood Pour, chippers back then. Pouring blood on him. How are you getting all this blood still? Stop! <laughs> let me out. Steven, you're a millionaire. Everybody loves you. Just do the dinosaur. I just want to. They won't I do my fucking dinosaur movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see they hoist willie back up and free her and she immediately slaps andy which again a little uh, two for two with him uh and then we get a really really touchy scene where in touching scene excuse me touching scene where indy uh gives short round his hat back and short round gives him his fedora back so cute. and then the theme starts playing and it's awesome but it's like the low it's like the lower version of the theme and then indy apologizes and they hug um, and he's like, now let's get out of here. And Andy turns around and says, all of us. And they head down to the mines. And then again, and then, uh, during all this, also just all the little flourishes, the little theme flourishes, always being always being uh, dropped here and there, left and right and top and bottom. Anytime you want, anytime we can put the Indiana Jones, you know, just a little little hint of it. I love that shit. It's so, it, it feels more heartwarming than it probably really is because people are burning and getting stabbed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, Indy heads down to the mines, of course, and I like the framing here because as, as it uh, the camera pans over, Indy is just posing real hard for that good lighting. And then when the dude runs at him, he just knocks that motherfucker back like 100 feet. He knocks him back so hard, the guy slides on dirt like 20 feet. And it's awesome. Uh, and then everything starts popping off. They free the kids. Uh, but then the mini boss, the chief guard, shows up. And he and Indy square off. Uh, Indy tries to hit the dude with a sledgehammer. The dude this just, rules. But the chief beats mm -hmm. it and then beats Indy's ass. Uh, Indy starts gotta, getting the... I got a factor of the furious for, your, oh, uh, for you since Tim's gone. I believe that's the same dude from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like the big... Oh, shit. Dude. That's yeah. awesome. And they have the same build for sure because they're the same height discrepancy there. Yeah. Apparently, uh, they just really like that dude. I mean, he's awesome. He makes for a hey good man, dad. Hey, man, you got a great guy, you keep going guy. back to him, right? Andy, really when true. you got a David Robinson, you don't put him on the bench. You play him. You know what I mean? Let him out there. Yeah. I mean, you John the, Stockton. You, you put the Twin Tower out there, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Indy starts getting the better of this dude until the young Maharaja shows up with his voodoo doll and starts, uh, starts in on Indy. Uh, Indy's almost dead. Uh, the two wind up on the conveyor belt uh, to the rock crusher, but and he can't get the upper hand because that little guy is up there fucking stabbing that voodoo doll to death. Uh, but then short round once again has to save his fucking ass by mm -hmm. scaling mm -hmm. a water mill and then knocking the kid the fuck out. Uh, what, an, what an MVP short round this whole movie. He's saving oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, then, of course, the chief guard gets his uh, sash caught in the rock crusher and then uh, gets his just dragged under, which is a very, very disturbing scene. But I would say, uh, I'll ask you guys, what's more disturbing, this or the propeller sequence from Raiders of the Lost Ark? We'll start with Andy. Ooh. I'll go with I'll go with this. Yeah, I, I I was hoping to see more gore, but I'm also glad I didn't see more gore. Blessing. Uh, it might be a tie for me. I think I'm gonna go the propeller scene though, because that seemed fucked up. Greg, propeller, because I feel like he saw it coming from so long. it was like it was happening in slow it's motion. Like the There's world, no way world. That he could do. Like, yeah, you couldn't help yeah. anybody. <laughs> Tim. Yeah, I'm going propeller because it's like that. That one, it, it was like you didn't see it coming, then you do see it coming, and it fucking happens. It's like oh shit. Yeah. Whereas this this sequence, besides uh, her character, is probably my least favorite in the entire movie. Where it's like I just feel like the, the action in this and the tension and the characters, what they're doing, whether it's short round fighting the Maharaja and the voodoo doll stuff or the conveyor belt stuff, isn't as entertaining to watch as the action that happened before or everything else we're about to get it was kind of like i could have done without this action here i d- i dug the hell out of it i felt the tension it, 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 and it, reaching for the little voodoo doll like thing to like pr- stop the stabbing from being happened so you could finally kind of wake up or whatever and come to and then i thought it was also really creative uh a creative way to get indiana jones out of the situation where the dude gets obviously pushed in and he's going to be sucked in because his garment is being, you know, pulled mm-hmm. in or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's pulling the chain because he's fucking scared. And then Indy's like, oh, shit, the chain's going up. Let me grab the other chain and I can get the fuck out of here. And it's just a creative way to get Indy out of this treadmill situation because the homeboy just is holding on for dear life. Um, yeah, that was really cool. A uh, short round, of course, then hits the Maharaja with another torch uh, breaking uh, him of this, uh, of the spell as well, uh, and then the Maharaja tells Shuran, "Hey, in order to get out of here, take the left tunnel. Uh, that's how you get out, and and which should be easy, right? Because how long and intricate can this tunnel possibly be, right, Tim?" Oof, we're going to see in a second. Short round uh, fucking spin kicks his way through the guards as they jump into a mining cart and we get the iconic mining cart chase sequence, uh, which was always, I, I always like kind of, this has never been my, my favorite indie, but I always love when we get to this part because I just feel like the ride, it just looks so fun to ride these things. And then of terrifying, course. Terrifying, not fun at all. Terrifying. I, fun I, I love this scene and I, I love it so much because there's so many of these movies we watch that I'm seeing for the first time that there are iconic scenes or characters or music or moments or whatever that I've seen a million times in pop culture. I've seen re- references to or sometimes just homages in like action scenes of things like that before. This is so definitively the minecart scene Mm -hmm. and watching i'm like well i haven't ever seen anything do it better like this really i i don't think that overstays its welcome i think that the escalation of action is is perfect i love how there's every time they figure out how to get past one of the people another minecart comes but it never feels like there's unlimited people coming after them i always have a good sense of where everyone's at and why things are happening and the way the crisscrosses is going on when it ends with the scene of the two carts like on different pads yeah. but next to each other i'm like wow like this is such a this is perfect action for perfect type of chase action because you always know where things are and where they're going which some so many movies just lose track of that uh of course uh while this is happening back in in the mine malaram uh floods the tunnel and this is always one of those things where i was like i guess i'll believe it but we've seen so many moments where there's giant gaps in this track where there's like a lot of water gorges how much water could have possibly come out of this one thing but lots, uh, lots it makes water. for a really cool effect when willie um indy and short round pop out the other end and they have to scale the side as the water is poking out and shooting everything at them uh of course they head upstairs or up up the cliff uh face to the rope bridge above uh and once they get over it they get about halfway and they get sandwiched in uh which we call andy what is that called pincer pincer attack reverse pincer attack pincer. Yeah. Yeah. they get they get reverse pincer uh <laughs> which is the most the worst kind of pincer mm-hmm. and then uh, indy has the just the worst idea ever which if i saw him do this i'd be like indy just give him the thing we're gonna we'll, we'll talk our way out of this but they force Willie and Short Round back onto the bridge, and then Indy's just wraps his leg. And Short Round's like, oh shit, this is a bad idea. Tells <laughs> Willie, and she's like, he's nuts. And Short Round's like, he's not nuts, he's fucking crazy. Uh, and then he, we just had the great moment where you guys were talking about where he raises the the machete above his his, his I don't uh, like this. His I head. Love this. And then Mole Ram goes like goes from being a bad guy to be like, no, don't do that. And then cut. 
and everyone drops off the bridge into the crocodiles below, except for Indy, a couple of the henchmen, Mola Ram and Willie and Short Round. Andy, Alex, what, why are you saying you didn't like it? I'm only going to say that the only reason I didn't like it is because he had his sword up the whole time. I'm with you. People knew Don't act like this was a surprise. You walked yeah. down that bridge with him being doing this. Like, well, like I didn't believe. I took it as they didn't believe. I took it as they didn't believe until he actually did it. And that's where they're like, oh, fuck, he is crazy. Like, we're No, but done. like, I think him doing it, like, they they acted so... I don't know. It's like they they didn't react to the threat is what I would have liked to have seen. Like, yeah. mm. if he would have done that, I would have loved one of them to be like, you're not going to do that shit. Don't act like you're going to do this. Like, you're right. going to kill your friends or whatever. But that that back and forth never took place. I would have loved it if it was just a surprise. Like, Indy standing there, sword in hand, looking back and forth. And then he's like, short round, speaks to him in Chinese. And they start, like, wrapping their hands. And then, bam, that would have been so much cooler. But it just felt kind of not as cool it was i still enjoyed it but i didn't love the way that that whole scene sort of a little too um, much build up yeah I, now I got i got a fact for you here uh the scene with the broken bridge proved a challenge since they couldn't use stuntmen for the dangerously long drop this was solved by making 14 dummies to stand in for the guards they contained a mechanism and batteries inside them which could operate their leg and arm movements the dummies were fastened to the bridge with the mechanism rigged to start working as soon as they were released from the bridge ropes this made the dummies look like they were really kicking and flailing as soon as the bridge is cut oh, shit that's, that's pretty fucking. That's, that's cool. Oh, I, use how. Real, I yeah. want to use real human beings. Life doesn't mean anything to me anymore. No, Steven, you can't <laughs> well, fucking throw them all off. I got two kids. I can use them. So, to push them off. The, By the way, to re, to re, scene, go for it. I was going to say to rewind just a little bit during the minecart chase. Did you guys notice where one of the minecarts fell over and the other minecart came through to, to blast it off the rails? Mm-hmm. It, very, it, it was very apparent if you, like, if you paid attention or if you like paused and freeze framed it. One of those minecarts is very much a JPEG that was sitting on that oh, track yeah. that they spun out right when the second one came through. And I noticed oh, that during funny. my viewing, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> that Dude, is very weird. HD really kind of fucks up a lot of the shots in this. Like, so many yeah. of the map paintings, there'll be a mountain in the background that's just kind of like just a little moving <laughs> and it's like yeah oh, I mean, even when you when you walk when they walk up to the temple the first time there, there's so much matted elements in the front of it you can see black lines like almost outlining like a cartoon it's completely ridiculous but uh, another element like that uh it combines with the fact i was just talking about about the the people dying and it being too violent and stuff but the scene where the first dude is lowered into the fire and like starts burning and he's like f- like you know twitching and shit Mm -hmm. they were saying that like it was just way too graphic and it 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 really felt like he was burning alive so they had to add that explosion on him where it looks like he gets engulfed in flames to to cover up up his twitching which oh. looks like just way too much i'm like similar your solution is to engulf them in a flame that looked like a jpeg so ahead, it's, a, it's like last time right where when the faces melted that was too disturbing so they put fire explosions over it exactly yeah. gotcha yeah That's like steven Spielberg, this is really really disturbing yeah i know add another body <laughs> like no <laughs> 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 uh let's see uh rom and indy start fighting on, on, on the ladder uh which culminates with rom being like hey i got this cool ability i'm gonna fucking tear your heart out but then short rounds like indy cover your heart <laughs> <laughs> like, don't, steal your heart. don't look into his eyes it's close so your funny. eyes and it covers heart uh and then uh uh Mularam orders his men on the other side to start shooting arrows at indy uh to which he responds jesus christ and starts climbing faster <laughs> uh which i thought was so jesus christ fuck um <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then of course these arrows. Uh, they start <laughs> They start getting into it, and uh, uh, the the stones um, start burning out of Indy's satchel. Or in, or Indy starts chanting, rather. He realizes what he has to do, uh, and he starts chanting, and the stones burn out. And on the last one, uh, Rom goes to grab it, but it burns his hand, causing him to fall. As he does, he tosses the stone up in the air, and Indy grabs it, uh, and then watches as his adversary it's falls falling to his death sequence. to Oof. get eaten by crocodiles below. Uh, Indy climbs back up and slams the rock down. Mission accomplished. Play the theme. Let's go take this bad boy back to the village where it belongs. Oh, also, all the kids are there, too. Uh, they're going to come back. Um, the army shows up also to, to blast the other side off and, and, and arrest everyone. And, and then we're like, oh, that's a payoff for the British, heads, dude. dude. Well, the there. army doesn't arrest people. <laughs> yeah, they were like, uh, those, those crocs look hungry. And they just start pushing them off the cliff like 300. Uh, and then the, uh, the back of the shaman says, now you can see 
back in the village, rather, the shaman says, now you can see the magic of the rock you bring. And he says, yes, I understand its power. Now, uh, Willie tells him, hey, you could have kept it. And he said, yeah, but it would have just, she's like, it could have brought you fortune and glory you've been looking for. He says, yes, but it would have just wound up in a museum collecting dust. Uh, and then Willie tells him she's never going anywhere with him ever again. And she fakes running her way. She's like, I don't know why. Can you, excuse me. Can you bring it back to Delhi? And then Willie, and he whips her around the waist and pulls her to him. And they kiss as Short Round sprays them down with another baby elephant blast. And all the village kids rush in to watch. Yeah. That is the end Credits. of the movie. While we're here, I want to give a shout out. I know we talked about Family Guy and the parodies there. I still stand by the best Temple of Doom parody is the Clerks the Animated Series episode that if you haven't watched, is just fantastic where Dante and Randall end up going over, or Dante ends up going over there with a little league uh, team he's coaching or whatever. Randall got uh, trapped over there. Fantastic stuff, everybody. Watch Clerks the Animated Series. <laughs> it is really funny. Seven syllables in Thank the you. middle. You need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. <laughs> Greg, Greg just, just danced like everyone's aunt that's a little too drunk at the wedding. <laughs> I'm standing would be more of an Elaine move. It's 2.30 p.m. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form, just like Chance Carter did. Chance Carter said, I specifically wanted to write a haiku about the plane crash and rafting scene, which I appreciate. I don't think we've ever had someone call out just a part that they're going to talk about. Call but here we go. Yeah. Raft for a plane crash. Raging through pine trees. Then splash. White water backlash. Hmm. That's that really, good. wow. Yeah. That's profound. Yeah. It's deep. It's beautiful Josh, words. Josh C. writes in uh, with a, a whole, whole one of the plot here. Here's my review. In haiku form once again. I couldn't make that rhyme. Much worse map paintings. Bad stop motion near the end. Still cool action, though. Problematic stuff. Baby <laughs> snakes and monkey brains. Why, though, Steven? Why? <laughs> I like that we've created just Steven <laughs> as this character in this episode. <laughs> uh, Steve, uh, come on. Come on. <laughs> Willie's not that bad. Oh, I'd God. scream about bugs as well. Steven's future wife. Not my favorite. Okay, first off, uh, the fact that you, you, know, you know she's that bad because you wrote in preemptively with this haiku saying she wasn't that bad. <laughs> Not my favorite. Works well as a prequel, though. Dan Aykroyd cameo. <laughs> like, yeah. Dan cameo. That's Just it. call it out. <laughs> and then miscellaneous, who that invented my Nick. <laughs> the, the plot in review, is uh, Indy, dressed with class. Dumbass drank from poison glass. Absconds with the lass. Squeeze the statue's jugs. Enter tunnel, filled with bugs. Then find secret thugs. Cart jumps like DK. Of course, Indy saves the day. Let that theme song play. Yo. That was hot. Miscellaneous. Those are bars. That was good. That was, that was really good. good. That was the best haiku we've ever had. The best series of haikus. Also, you used abscons in that shit. Yeah. Word of the day. Got a lot. That is a 20-point word right there. The, the thing I didn't expect watching this movie. Ragu. Sorry, Ragu. Blessing. No, you're I good. guess we're doing it. Go ahead, Bless. Go ahead, Bless. No, I was, was going to say, the thing I didn't expect it, watching this movie was to find out that it had uh dk64 like lineage that i could like there's lineage in dk64 they can or dk in general they yeah can like this back was really in it, this was really inspired by dk like this is where my this is where minecart like the minecart mm -hmm. chase yeah. came from yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, steven spielberg played dk64 it's like shit i need to make it <laughs> yeah he played it, out, it. Was they like, came fuck, out I so close together it's one, yeah. it's one of those things just like who who influenced who you know what i mean did i influenced him did he influence me who's wearing the beanie first who knows i don't know it's the ragu Thank you, Andy Bagu. Oh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys, the podcast from the podcast where we rank all the bad guys in the Indiana Jones Cinematic Universe. Right now, of course, we've only had one to rank before, which means that Tout and Bellic from Indiana Jones 1 are at the top of the list. Where do we want to put the, the thuggy cult, right? Is that where we're just going to put it generalized? Thuggy cult here? Yeah. The, the cult, but also, there's the main... I think it's number one. I think because it was a lot more clear, and I think that the things they did... They were, were really bad. Were, were really bad. And it was interesting to watch and like scary and the action was good. And I liked their, <laughs> their, their little base very much. Um, yeah. And also just the main dude that I'm blanking on his name right now, Nick, you, you have it written down. Uh, Mola Ram is the, I think the type pronounce. Yeah. He's a bad guy. Like that, that's yeah. a, a villain. 
I agree. Yeah, never took out hearts. Exactly. Yeah. And to be clear, we're not saying Nazis aren't bad. <laughs> they didn't do bad things. We're just talking about Nazis and Indiana Jones one there, right? Uh, th- there was just so much character. I-, I guess they both have a lot of of character. I was just. I feel like even though the dude pulled out a heart, the other guy was still creepier in the first song. <laughs> like just, oh, like, just like I, I the agree. Vibe I think he he's puts out. I, I like how uh, yeah. Blessing kind of put it last week, where he's like he's scary and capable. Which you kind of felt mm-hmm. like that, whereas like mm-hmm. the 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 sort of I don't know I always felt like the the villains in this one were just so cookie cutter and kind of one dimensional. Whereas like I think Bella, but they got kids and they got slave kids down in a tunnel. They got people whipping the kids. They're whipping other people. You got, you got yeah. You I got, mean they're they're definitely like they're definitely like they're meaner, meaner. I mean, or, or I guess as like much bad mean as it can be versus Nazis. I guess bit, are they? <laughs> we're very talking about what the Nazis did in Indiana Jones one. We are not defending Nazis. We are not saying Nazis were not bad people. We're no, just saying just, in the Indiana Jones universe. I was just always more scared of the the, the Nazis in the first one. I always thought that that tout. I think it's, I think you're pronouncing it correctly, Gary. Tout. Tot. Uh, uh, tot. I don't know how you say it, but that always that guy always. Creepy terrified guy. me when i was a kid because he's super creepy super reserved and like you know he runs shit whereas this one it's just a little bit more straightforward like kind of evil these guys are bad guys they're, they're comic like, book the cartoon occult. bad they're guys like, yeah. yeah whereas in the other one it was like wow they're possessing people an, they yeah, turn they, indy on his pe- on his friends on his people they like tear minute, hearts though. out they're like way scarier minute, they're though. top of the list bad guys i mean talk i mean but right. that plot line like we saw that happen in fast uh six or seven or eight you know but back in 1984 <laughs> you didn't see that when dom turned on the, the family uh, that's what i'm talking about yeah. Yeah. what are you doing kalima brian yeah dom tore that dude's uh heart out yeah tore his heart out michelle rodriguez is like cover your heart Dom, don't do it. Come here, hunt. Dom. I have to do this. Bam. I have to rip it. All right, so number one, how are we feeling on votes? Everybody's happy with that? Sure. Andy, don't I'm sorry. Was that you, a Vin Andy. Diesel? Was that Vin uh, Diesel, Andy? I have to rip out this man's heart. You sound like Sylvester Stallone from Rambo, and I want you to know it's fucking working for me. I'm trying to, I'm, I'll work on it. I'll work on it. Thank you. For next Thank week. You. I'll bring now, back the Vin Diesel impression for next week. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. For Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade. <laughs> now it's time to rank the Indiana Jones movies. Currently, number one is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Who wants to start? I would say this is second. I don't think I don't. I think this movie is. It just doesn't. It, it falls a little short of what they accomplished with Raiders. Um, I think Raiders is more fun. I think it has more of a spirit of adventure. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, I, I think him going to all the different locations there's much more there's a lot more characters in this and then just karen allen in general is just so much more likable as a character than the Lee scott character that i think that one that one holds number one for me i would put this as number one i think this is a more action-packed pulp adventure which is what i expect and again uh, i've already talked about being just this being my template for indiana jones but this is what i expect out of indiana jones a bunch of action colorful set pieces crazy villains when we're off on a crazy adventure over there that has a damsel in distress that yes we don't like but it's what I expect out of these movies. This movie, uh, I'm reminded quite a bit of Edgar Wright in review, where when we're talking about uh, the Cornetto trilogy uh, sequence of movies, I think this movie does. I love Short Round in this movie. I don't love uh, Willie. I like the action in this movie, preferred to part one, but in part one, I prefer. I think just the overall story in general, I prefer that story more than here. So I'm fighting against, you know, what elements do I think are more sure. important and which ones would I put higher? I would, I think I would still have Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, number one. Um, because again, because unlike you all, like, I'm glad that the Nazis lost and we talked about this earlier. Like, <laughs> yeah. you all seem very, it's so crazy that Greg's such a huge advocate. You all seem very wishy-washy Jesus on this. Christ. Yeah. I, I put Temple of Doom. <laughs> Uh, number one, and it's I'm very similar to Andy, where I don't think that uh, it, it's it's cl- number one as a whole, and there are elements of Raiders that I definitely think are, are clearly better. But for what I'm looking for from an indie movie, I think this one delivers way way more and way higher marks on all all of those elements, and it not going to a million different places, I think allowed it to focus on the places it does go a lot more, and all the set pieces and locations they have here kind of have a purpose and do something cool. And something cool, both from an action standpoint and from a why are the characters here and what's the point of this? And so because of that, I'd I'd give it number one. Bless. Deciding vote. Blessing Eddie Jr. Give me the position. Man, I'm nervous. Uh, 
I think us us talking through the plot and going back through the movie has kind of made me realize that I think this movie has very high highs and very low lows, like higher mm-hmm. highs than uh, Raiders and lower lows than Raiders. Um, you guys kind of put me on to how great of a character that short round is. And I, actually talking it through made me realize how much I appreciate that character. I'm going to put... I'm going to put Raiders above this, though. Like, I think Raiders overall is just a really Correct. solid movie. Uh, and Marion is a character I really enjoyed versus Willie in this movie. So there, there you go. You Good job, The buddy. rankings are yeah. number one, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Number two, Temple of Doom. Uh, we will return next week with Magic Mike in review. Oh, and <laughs> we're going to continue on with Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Till then, but not the last, last one. Anything goes. Last